welcome to my second book haul. This is book haul for December. I have the books for this month lined up in front of um, what will be a poster board. In the future I'll be putting up different uh, segments of the globe to indicate which areas of the world and stories um, from different countries or language groups we've read, but I'll start adding stuff like that to the poster board in January. For this month, instead of doing the geographical, cultural um, lineup and metho me methodical way of going through the books around the world and versions of Cinderella, uh, I'm doing an eclectic collection, so I try to find some various retellings of Cinderella told in some fun and unique ways. And on the very far left that we do see this, it's not a terrible book. The art is not my personal favorite, the style. It actually ends on a creepy note. I don't want to give it away. Uh, the writing style, though, the narrative is too choppy. It calls things chapters, but it's not really. It's just like two pages with just a couple paragraphs and some pictures on them. So it's not really a chapter book, but for some reason the author put chapter breaks in there that was just completely unnecessary. Um, if you've already read this book and you enjoyed it, I would also recommend the British short story, uh, Prince Sender. I think that story I actually enjoyed a little bit more. It was a, like a short 30 minute cartoon or less. Um, I watched it and, and I hadn't finished doing my review for that. But when I do a series of short reviews, I'll, I'll cover that one. But if you have read Cinderella, The Terrible Truth, I think you'll enjoy that short. If you haven't read Cinderella, The Terrible Truth, um, if you like scary stories or maybe you want a Cinderella story during Halloween time for whatever reason, then yeah, you might give it a try, you might read it to your little ones if you have kids. Personally, I'll skip it. Um, and the kids I currently take care of I think would be interested in that story, so it's not too bad though. Uh, I would give it just a, a 2. It's average. Like, it tries to do something new, but it actually borrows from another fairy tale in a way that, meh. Like I said, it, it's kind of a take it or leave it. There is a page on there, or rather, there's one image near the end of the book that is definitely <laughs> an homage to the Disney animated film. And that's something I found, like, even though I'm trying to do this eclectic reversion um retellings of Cinderella the vast majority of these you can tell have been hugely inspired and influenced by the Disney animated Cinderella so there's that um the next one Cinderella a classic um a folktale classic excuse me by Paul Galdon the artwork is really pretty. I personally like it. There's a couple of pages where I think he overshades their faces and he almost looks like zombies unintentionally. It just, but for the most part, I liked that he put the effort into getting costumes and period stuff. It's like it's the only one that really um, tries to do that. And even though, like I said, it's supposed to be an eclectic uh, retelling, that one's actually just uh, a straight um, translation or retelling of the translation of the Charles Perlet version. So there's only a few changes. I really like the artwork. So again, I'll just give that one a two. It's an average. It's not bad. I liked it. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but it it really doesn't add a whole lot to the story. I think the one thing I I prefer about this one though other than the costuming and the, the art style is just that it keeps that version of Cinderella and her relationship with her stepsisters 
that I really appreciate that Cinderella isn't just this meek and quiet character, but she actually shows strength of character and actively being kind to her stepsisters and trying to develop a sisterly relationship with them, which you see that in the end. So actually, no, you know what? I will go back. I, I kind of waver back and forth on the rating on this one, but I will keep it a 2.5 because the ending of it, it adds some details to there that are pretty good. So yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead. That one's, I'm going to, when I go to Goodread, good reads and I rate these books. That one's a 2.5. The very next one is Give Us a Smile Cinderella. This is kind of a cute story that is focused on teaching a moral lesson about brushing teeth. Um, let's see. I have my notes and they're all scrambled up now. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. A different kind of moral story. Like I said, it's on brushing your teeth. In the very back, there's a section on read the next steps. And they, it gets kind of preachy. Um, basically, this is a book meant to be read like in a class to encourage kids to take care of their teeth and good hygiene. The artwork is cute and peppy, which matches this new retelling pretty good. It's a very peppy um, narrative. Uh, it's a cute and different, yet for all its creativity, it tends to fail to make full use of it. I was kind of disappointed in um, just how much of it does follow the normal patterns of... Like I said, it's like they they took the outline for the Disney animated movie for most of these books and followed those pretty closely. Um, also, the names of the characters for like the stepsisters and Prince Rupert, I believe, are used from the Roger and Hammerstein versions of Cinderella. So... That's interesting to see that connection and uh, influence on the story. The artwork, like I said, is really fun. Most of the costuming kind of looks like a, a hodgepodge of old, old timey wimey styles and yet a little more contemporary as well. Now, this next one, Dear Cinderella, which I'm sorry I have part of that cover covered up, but. That one was really cool. I really like the concept of this one because it's retold as letters back and forth between Cinderella and Snow White. And this is by um, Marina Moore and Mary Jane, I think it's Kennedy. And the artwork is by Julie Olson. And it's just, it's super cute. It's very whimsical. I did have a few problems with it, like, I just, I wanted a little bit more from it. I realize these are kids' books, but, like, the more I read kids' picture books, the more I feel like writers are insulting their readers. Just because they're beginning readers or their young ones getting stories read to them doesn't mean you have to dummy things down, and I felt like this story was distilled too much and there was a lot of girl power dreams do come true like I think the phrase dreams do come true was said three or four times in this story and keep in mind all the narrative is letters between Cinderella and Snow White so it was really kind of bad that that's what they did with that instead of really exploring it like the very first couple of letters I thought was funny because you did see the similarities and yet the differences and the setups between the stories because they both have step mothers who abuse them. Um, Cinderella frequently has two stepsisters and Snow White doesn't have any stepsisters and where Cinderella's stepmom is more of a foil towards her happiness, she's not really a villain. Snow White's stepmother, though, is truly a villainous character. And 
So you get this comparisons. There is one letter where the Seven Dwarfs writes to Cinderella and okay, I shouldn't spoil it. I really don't want to spoil it because I do recommend reading this book if if you have kids, little girls, it's definitely a book targeted towards little girls. Like the other three, uh, The Terrible Truth, Give Us a Smile, and even the folk retelling I think boys would enjoy. The Dear Cinderella is definitely very much geared towards girls. So little boys probably would not like it very much. Now, the next one, Interstellar Cinderella. I thought this looked pretty cool. The art style is pretty interesting. It The artist, uh, if you read the back information, has worked with both um, Disney and with Cartoon Network, and it definitely looks like the art style that you might see in a Cartoon Network series. So, excuse me while I try to readjust my camera. My Mac crashed, so I can't edit any of this. I have to try to do this all in one shot. Um, the story is okay. It's very much it's about girl power, girls being mechanics. I feel like this story is just like Give Me a Smile in that it's written with a message of using us the name, the, the familiar name of Cinderella to just push a, a feminist agenda of girls being mechanics and it just on one hand if the writer like just seriously feels passionate about oh yeah encouraging girls to go into sciences and make auto engineering and things like that that's fine that's great but in this one, it just didn't feel organic. It didn't feel like a real character so much as just shoving a message through this familiar story. And there's something about the narrative that felt a little off early on in the story. It felt like a page was missing from this story. Like, it just... it We're thrown into this world. They use, you know, fake science -y, you know, futuristic outer space language, which can be fun and interesting, but I just felt like I needed one more page to let this world breathe and to enjoy, like, the creativity side of this, of, oh, yeah, Cinderella's in outer space. Um, I really would have liked that. So, um... Yeah, I just feel like most of these stories are missing opportunities because they're like, oh, it's just for kids, and they dumb things down a bit, and that's a bummer. Now, Ninjarella was one I was, like, most looking forward to other than the Dare Cinderella because I love ninja stuff, like anything ninja. And again, it's like this girl power message, but it's just kind of bizarre. Like, they are so focused on doing oh, ninja this, ninja that, that I feel like it looks ridiculous. Like, even the costume designs for the stepmom and the stepsisters are kind of these pseudo-anime-style, like, ninja costumes, even though they're not interested in being ninjas, they're interested in being girly, so it's kind of like, okay, why is the narrative talking about them being girly girls, but they don't look like girly girls? And there's just certain things like that in the story that's inconsistent. The artwork and storytelling. It, it felt like... Um, what you saw drawn on the page as far as, as like the stepsisters and stepmom and the world didn't really mesh well with the actual narrative. And of all the stories, it, this book actually goes in the most detail in the world. And so I guess that's why, like, it bothers me so much. Because <sighs> why does she need a ninja fairy godmother? You know, you don't just throw a ninja in front of everything. Um, also, they have a glossary of words in the back. And some of the words that they felt a need to put in the glossary, I thought was like, uh, okay, that was unnecessary. <laughs> I feel this is a little insulting to younger readers or something to do that. I don't know. Um, not the concept of having a glossary, but, like, just some of the words that they put on there. It's like, okay. Um, it, it's actually a comic book style, so it's not like a normal picture book. You actually have 
more panels per page to flesh out a story. So in that sense you do have more time to develop the world in the story. Um, I liked it to some degree. I Actually my favorite part is in the very back they go through a little bit of the history of the Cinderella story. It mentions that Charles Perlet's the translation of the French version there is actually the most common and well-known version of the story. But then it goes in details and tells um, uh, the old Italian version, and which is a little different. And so I actually enjoyed reading that part a little more than I enjoyed Ninjarella. So <laughs> I'm disappointed in, in all of these for some of the same reasons, it's just I feel like they had some really cool concepts that they just didn't deliver and I kind of felt like it's just because this concept, oh, it's a kid's picture book and so they didn't take full advantage of these unique ideas that they had. Um, again, it's just, it's really unfortunate. Um, I forgot to go through all the ratings that I'm giving all these books. But I'll, I'll post that up in my video notes. Okay.